Do I need more corn? Yeah. Okay. And then I'll start making a salad. Uh, Eli, yo, if you want to um, yeah, get started for a salad. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. Can we get one more cucumber? Do we need another onion for tomorrow? We need one tomato and one onion. Just some onion. We decided to start this project because 80% of our food is imported to Maui and there's a huge growing movement of farmers that are growing locally and we have good conditions and we're able to grow a lot of food here and so we thought that we'd go around to the different farmers and supermarkets and different places to see like where the local food comes from and how the people make it and process it. So we prepared for this project for about two months and all of us had to come up with a recipe that consisted of all local products. So one of the things that I had to do was I went into Mana Foods and met with Ryan and we made a list of all local produce and so because they had so much we decided to mainly shop there and at the Kula Farmers Market. So for our shopping we went to the upcountry Kula Farmers Market which is by the Longs in Kula and it was very enjoyable. I mean they had a lot of local produce and it was really nice because you actually got to interact with the people that were actually growing the produce. And so we bought mainly eggs, honey, lychee. While we were there, we got to talk to some of the farmers and they got to tell us about their farms and how they began farming. My husband and I, we have about 100 chickens. I come here every Saturday and sell. We have about 40 dozen of that we sell. We, we try to do it 100% organic. That means healthy. We consume vegetables almost every another day. That's why I'm like this. I like this. So the day before, we went to Mono Foods and hunted down local produce. Mono Foods provided $500 of store credit for us to shop for a project. We had a big list of all these produce we had to get and stuff. Um, it was really easy to find locally grown products because they're labeled. They had produce from local farms on the island and just stuff that was like grown naturally like the right way. We started off our whole project helping Jerry and Janet on Kupa'a Farms, which is a four-acre organic farm in Lower Kula. Everything's organic. We do a lot of stuff to take care of the soil, and then the health of the plants falls out of that naturally. Within two to three years, he was able to make the soil really good and make the erosion rates go down, and so he's able to make a really good farm off of land that wasn't good in the beginning. Compost is essential for an organic farm. Compost is 60% living stuff. He taught us a lot about compost and the different elements there is in compost, which is really interesting because I didn't know a lot of that. And I found it really cool that he got his scraps from different restaurants and that that all goes into his compost. <laughs> we had to dig holes and put compost and put fungi bacteria and then plant the little heads of lettuce. This is the root. The fungus germinates on the root sets up a home, like a little apartment complex, in the root and then sends out all these little strands. And those strands go out in search of uh, water, minerals, things like that, and it brings it back to the plant. Uh, we are on Kapa'a Farm, so we helped Jerry by planting a few rows of lettuce, like green and red lettuce. More soil around that one that you just planted, that'd be good. There we go. We helped harvest potatoes. And they were really interesting because they're all different colors. Like we had pink ones and purple ones. Weird looking potato. Working on the farm is kind of fun. Like you get to learn a lot about all different organisms. And listening to Jerry talk about everything on the farm made me realize how, how hard farming is. Like you have to know the seasons. You have to know a lot about soil, compost. He has to plant certain things at certain times and keep them in certain time frames. After we went to Kupa'a Farms, we went to Nohoana, 
platforms owned by the Pellegrino family in Waikapu. They luckily gave us Kahlo and Luau leaves for the Luau stew we had to make that night on our first day. Harvesting a little bit early, but it'll be nice to taste the difference between all the different varieties of Kahlo. They're pretty uncommon Hawaiian varieties. One is called Mana Ulu. It makes yellow poi. It was one of the more favored dryland varieties of Kahlo. And uh, we grow this both in our lo'i and both in the mala, mala'ai, the dryland. The farm that we stayed at, Kolele Farms, was very peaceful and the owner was very welcoming and it was really well set up for our group. I'm making burgers with Maui cattle beef and Maui onions. Local burgers, hot and ready. So the only oil that we were able to use was macadamia oil. But we found out that there are people on the island that are growing olives and by next year they will have a press so that we can have local olive oil. Roxanne and her family from Kua Fields came down to deliver a box of fresh produce and tell us a little bit about what they do and why they started it. Got gorgeous butter lettuce from Waipoli, um, Pacific Produce. Hydroponic greens. We really wanted to have some cheese and butter in our diet and there's no local dairy facilities on Maui so we called Monique with Naked Cow Dairy on Oahu and tried to figure out a way that we could get her cheese and butter and luckily we were able to get it through Kula Fields. Each week I put together, you know, I figure out how many customers I have that are going to be on for delivery that week. I set a budget and then I just start calling farmers to see what they might have available. My family and I are customers of Kula Fields and we love getting our produce box every week. Do you know what this is? Kale. And um, kale. Yeah. <laughs> and that comes from Tom Rice Farms up in Kula. It's a really good way for people to get fresh produce that's local on Maui. It's easy. They bring it straight to your door. Her son comes to my door and drops off our produce and hangs out with my dog. and. It's just a nice community experience as well. Um, Nicolette's dad, Farms, came by to help us make coconut milk. And so he told us about how we should husk. And then I take this tool here, and I get the meat out of the half of the coconut. And then this is what you get. And then what he'd do is he'd add two cups of water and the coconut meat into the blender so it turns into a like a fine um, smoothie like texture and then he poured it into this bag to separate the pulp from the juice or the milk and pour it into a jar and that's how you get coconut milk. coconut milk. The meal that I had to create was luau stew, poke and poi and so we used the color that um, Hokuau gave us. Later on in that day we made poi and everyone got to try. It was pretty fun, everyone got sticky. Then we used the luau leaves for the luau stew. We're making potatoes and this is the butter from Naked Cow Dairy. And these are the potatoes we harvested yesterday and we're gonna saute them with cheese and butter. After breakfast, we went to the Maui Bees Farm. Aloha and welcome to Maui Bees. We're an organic biodynamic farm and our passion is bees. When we got out of the car at first, um, we weren't really used to farms. Our Hannah got attacked by a bee. Is it a bee? <laughs> and they had a bunch of animals like chickens, goats, uh, turkeys, and a garden of vegetables. She had chickens in this thing that could move around. They would eat and they would poop in one spot for one day and then she'd move them so then that grass could grow again and not be like dead. And they um, hatched all their own chickens and turkeys from eggs and later Ellie got peed on by a goat. That is not funny. <laughs> <laughs> Ellie, what just happened? Tell us what happened. No. Oh, Ellie got peed on it was interesting to hear Leah talk about how bees will rather die than risk their colony. The whole mentality of a bee is to feed the whole colony. Let's go gather nectar for all of us. 
And it's like such a great human thing. Let's get, let's make food for all of us so we can all be healthy. She's trying to say that humans should be more like bees because um, nowadays everyone bases like food around money and stuff. If we had the mentality of taking care of everybody and keeping yeah. everyone healthy and nobody was in it for the greed of, I just want to sell you something, but nothing that comes out of a box is truly food. At the end of the tour, she gave us a big jar of honey and in two days that honey was gone. And then we went back for lunch and we ate lettuce wraps made by Hee -E. Tomatoes, onions, cilantro, and we're using beef from Maui Cattle Company and Molokai Livestock Cooperative. Um, the residents helped us find a banana tree like right outside the door where we chopped down and we got to eat like fresh bananas. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we got to visit Fresh Island Fish in Kaului. Like started off as like a small fish business. They used to sell like fish and chips down in Maalaya. Um, but they expanded into like one of the biggest distributors in Hawaii. And we do buy locally too from local fishermen. So certain times of the year, certain fish will be running. Right now we're seeing a lot of Onos and Ahi come from Kona. So what we're doing is the market gets flooded there. So we fly them overnight to deliver out here. The day we were there, we got to see them cut up some of the fresh fish that just came in. The hotels require like a thousand pounds a day. The fishermen can't supply that. So we have to import it from like Oahu or other places. They gave us mahi for dinner that night. So we went to Maui Cattle Company. Uh, we're here at Maui Cattle Company. Our processing plant is located in the old Maui Land and Pine Pineapple Cannery facility in Kahului. We had to put on like these special outfits. <laughs> all, all of the cattle is harvested up at uh, the Coit's packing house. What we do is we, we bring the, the, the carcasses down here after they've been dressed. And, but you won't see any carcasses today because all of the cattle that we have has come to us in primals from the Big Island. Because of the drought, uh, we bring animals from the Big Island. But it was sad to listen to him explain to us that they go on a month-to-month -month basis on whether or not they're going to stay in business. Can, can Hawaii be totally sustainable? And that's a very difficult one. I think we can supply some of the market, which might be maybe 30%, but it's so much better than just 20 years ago. We might have been supplying maybe 3% of the market. You know, if we can get up to 30% of the market, what a gain for local farmers, the local economies. The other thing we need to do is we need to encourage young, young farmers and young ranchers. We went back for dinner and Sabra, which is um, a friend of Malia's, who's a professional chef, came. Okay, we're going to have um, some mahi-mahi with some local flavors with a little ginger and lemongrass and minced shallot and garlic and chili peppers wrapped in banana leaf with coconut milk. It was a lot of fun because we were just chatting the whole time and we talked about one of her interests, which is astrological signs. And she told us about how our signs relate to the foods that we should eat. And she's written a couple of books on that. So interesting about the whole sign thing because yeah. people are so much like their signs. Oh, yeah, sure. Like I read those airy things and I'm like, dang, that's me. <laughs> Perfect. That is so pretty. We cooked so much food that we decided to invite Sylvia, the owner of the farm, and her sons to come and eat with us. Making macadamia banana pancakes. Um, it's just macadamia nuts, bananas, and eggs. In the morning, Jennifer from Sustainable Living Institute of Maui showed us their garden at Maui College. It's open to um, all of the faculty members and students on campus, as well as people in the community nearby. We got to see the earth bags that they made during the earth bag classes and we got to taste lots of fruits and vegetables. <laughs> it's all edible. One of the goals in the garden is kind of teaching people to learn to grow their own food again so that they can have food for their table and they can grow their food locally. The second one is education. We wanted people to have a place where they could come 
and uh, learn about growing food and all of the different components of that. So this space serves as a place for all kinds of educational um, training classes and events. It was also wanted to create a bridge to the community from campus. Also, we wanted to create farm to table initiatives. So we're working with the Maui Culinary Academy and actually be um, preparing foods grown right here on campus. A lot of people may not have the land to be able to have a garden, but would like to learn how to make a garden and be somewhat self-sufficient. It provides you with a way in which you know you can be healthy and you know where your food is coming from. So after we visited the community garden, our group decided to split up and one group went to Whole Foods and the other group went to Okie's. Hi everybody, welcome to Whole Foods Market. My name's Steve, I'm the local produce buyer. So what we do here at Whole Foods is we um, encourage our stores to carry as much local produce as we can. Currently we have over 300 local vendors that we're purchasing from and that includes 108 local farms that we purchased from in the Hawaiian Islands. So I went to Okie's and Okie's is a privately owned business in the corner of Kahului Foodland. There she talked to us about um, how they buy directly from local fishermen and how they have a large variety as well. Most people they like the fresh local ahi. They, we sell the frozen too. Yeah, but we have both fresh and frozen. We were doing this project and we were trying to find fish for our menu. Um, a lot of locals said that Okie's would be the best place to go. On Wednesday afternoon, we were all so tired that instead of actually making a meal, we just kind of went into the refrigerator and picked out whatever looked good to us. I would actually do this for the rest of my life if I could eat at least bread. I think the boys made their own omelet. I ate half of a papaya. Some people got to go swimming in the stream. And another place that we decided to go to that is well known for providing local produce is Pukalani Superette. And so we went there and we got to have a tour of the store by, from Miles, who's one of the owners. We uh, actually use many farmers up country mostly. That's why we, we've been having a lot of success, you know, at least our produce department. People come here and that's all they buy. There's a great demand for organic produce now because it's supposed to be pesticide free. To have your farm or your produce be certified organic, it's a whole process. There's another segment right on Maui where they, they grow pesticide free produce as well as organically managed produce. I think there's a big market for, for that segment. So we went to Haleakala Ranch and Greg loaded us up in his truck and he took us to see all the livestock that he had there. Total across the ranch is 1,800 breeding goats, 500 breeding sheep, and about 900 breeding cows. Uh, right now the biggest problem is drought and uh, overpopulation of deer. We can't manage them, we can't keep them out. One thing that they started was the chicken pilot project and it, the eggs from their chickens was the eggs that we were eating throughout our meals during this project. Because right now, um, that grain that they're eating is, you know, is all imported from the mainland. So the grass they eat re reduces the amount of grain we got to buy by 20%. We're working on a project that has these black soldier fly larvae, and that would reduce it down to about 50% of grain that we'd have to bring in. Uh, it's real high in energy and protein, so their, their ration would be balanced nutritionally. We went to Kula Country Farms and talked to Chauncey, who owns his farm with his wife, Tina. Uh, I'm a fourth generation farmer, and uh, they're immigrants from Japan. And they came here and uh, after working for the plantation, they decided to start farming on their own. They opened a farm stand where they can sell their own produce and also bring in other farmers. We also have products from other farmers. We help sell their products. And uh, they, they come here and drop off products and we can sell it to the community and the community can get to know their farmers. And that way, uh, everything here is from Maui. And uh, you know exactly where your food's coming from if you shop at Kuna Country Farm Stand. They have different you pick things where depending on the season, they would sell strawberries or pumpkins. Um, during this time, they're selling strawberries that we got to pick too. So on the third day, 
we realized that we had so many vegetables and just produce left that we just decided to kind of throw it all together and see what we could come up with. Um, we're taking <laughs> over. Hectic. So we're making a stir fry with all the leftover veggies and the leftover ground beef from Maui Cattle Company. And we're boiling half corn to just eat on the side. And we have bell peppers on the side. Bell peppers on the side. And we have all these veggies going into the stir fry. We have kale and tomatoes and basil and green onion in that. And then we have the cucumber, zucchini, all that stuff. And then we're making a salad. And corn. 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 That's it. Wow, we're having a total big feast of what's in the fridge. I think it might be our best meal. And you here. guys have like become this amazing team over the last four days. Like we look know. at this. Like after these two days we've like been living together and doing everything together, so making meals and stuff have been a lot more fun. A photographer from the Maui News is coming to uh, document our little project. So we're making breakfast for him. I am impressed. Try to teach yourself the difference between what's local and what's not. And I realized that a lot of the things that I, I thought were locally made here are made out of um, ingredients that are not local. Like bread is made locally but with wheat from somewhere else. It's really easy for me now to identify what's local and what's not local just because we've been to so many farms and markets and we like know where it is now too so I can like tell my family where to find local foods and where not to. We barely made any trash you know plastic packaging and stuff but we had tons of compost. And that was pretty good because we could use compost for our soils and nutrients for our vegetables and stuff like that. So whatever comes out of the ground goes back into the ground, you know, circle of life. <laughs> it's really difficult to actually eat local and be able to eat something on the go. I mean, Malia tried to make us dehydrated fruit and veggie tips, and it's just a really difficult thing to be able to do. I mean, one afternoon we ate $40 worth of lychee. The first 24 hours. Um, I was craving a lot of the chips and the canned foods and the Vienna sausage in the morning. So it was definitely something that I didn't expect. And, but after the first three days, I think that it's possible. Eating processed food kind of disconnects us from where our food comes from. We don't know where it comes from or how it's being processed. We just know it comes in a box and you just kind of eat it and it kind of disconnects us from the land and like knowing really where your food's coming from. It like opened my eyes to see how long it takes for farmers to grow stuff and like the process that they have to go through and all the work they put into it. And uh, as far as like changing my view, not really. I mean like some stuff is local and like you want to support local but like, and it's fresher, but sometimes like the prices are what make you decide what you want to get. When you think about it and you know who's producing the food and you know that it's organic and the ways they're going about it and how much they love their plants and really cherish them, it makes it a little bit easier to buy the food and it's a lot better since it isn't in a box for a month shipped over and pre-freezed or whatever. It tastes, tastes better. After doing this entire project, I'd advise a lot of people to, you know, buy local foods because at least you know where they have been. You know, get your food at the farmer's market. They have fresh greens and carrots and everything else, you know, colorful veggies. <laughs> you know, stuff that's really good for you. I think the passion that rubbed off from the lady from Kula Bees like really inspired me and her farm was so beautiful and so like wonderfully laid out. It was like really easy to get around, like everything was like placed well and she was so passionate about the bees and you know growing livestock and she was so knowledgeable that it inspired me to want to kind of be like her or like have a farm just like that. You know it's really small scale but it still produced a lot of stuff and it was really healthy looking and it was like really inspiring for me. Do you think you would ever go consider being a farmer? Yeah. Honestly, yeah. Yeah. What kind? Of, if you were to be a farmer, what kind of farmer do you think? Um, maybe I don't know, like vegetables or like maybe chicken farm or something. Yeah. You like the? You think you could kill a chicken? Yeah. Yeah. No, I don't know. <laughs> maybe. <laughs>